as it started. Go live. There you go. All right, okay. Can you all hear each other? Can you all see me? Yep. Um. Hi, everyone. Okay, this takes getting used to the delay. So today is something that's going to be a lot of fun, by the way. Today we're going to start off our first lesson into uh, quantitative chemistry. All right. I'm going to share my screen in a minute. If you can see my face. For those of you who are, uh, who are joining in later can kind of probably skip ahead for the next five minutes or two, three minutes at least. I'm just getting ready to... Uh, the broadcast this this is already on uh, on uh, wa alaikum salam hi amna how are you manaf everybody doing all right thank you for joining in here okay we're going to keep it nice and safe let me just remove that let me just remove this yeah all of this stuff is out of my screen so i can only and only have all right so today what are we doing Okay. Mm -hmm. Chemistry calculation. That's what we are still going. All right. I always think I need less time to prep, but I always need end up taking up two, three more minutes, four more minutes. Okay, so today, yep, we're going to start off with mole calculation, yep, moles are fun, yes, moles are fun, absolutely they are, absolutely they are, yeah, moles are relative atomic mass and all that stuff, and so that's what we're going to talk about, so let's start, I'm going to share my screen also, moles with you, they are my the reason why I teach chemistry at times. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now sharing my screen. Okay. Look. Uh, yeah, today I just dressed up myself. I just felt like dressing up. All right. I didn't dress up for you guys. Don't feel so special. Yeah. Yeah, some people are asking to please speak in Urdu. Look, I've been teaching in English all my life because that's the medium of instruction of exam also. It'll be stupid of me to teach English. Yeah. So that's what we have. All right. Thing got stuck. And then, yep, yep, yep. So, yes. So now everybody gets to see my screen and maybe, you know, 
Yeah. I don't know if I can do that. Um, there you go. Does that work out? Yeah. I don't know if this works out. I'm trying this new little thing where you get a little bit of me. You get a little bit of, yeah. Nice small. All mm, right. So we're going to work out this way and see if this works out for all of us. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You can see my little video in this little video, you know, but that's about it. All right. So let's start. So that, that part is the, the, the looking pretty part. Now, now, Moses, where it goes on hill for many of you. And the reason for that is that it's, it's, it's not really taught generally by keeping in mind that it's simply math. And uh, what we have to understand is that this, you know, is, is literally just math. That's what I want to focus on, all right? So if you guys, just one sec. Let me just move this there also. Trying to still juggle three screens, by the way. I don't know how this works. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this stays on top. Okay. So you got Q&A, you got too many things going on. All right. Okay, so let's start. Is the idea of relative masses. So I'm starting now. All right. So we've got to understand this idea of relative masses. Why do we have that? Now, understand that atoms are the smallest, the absolute smallest uh, unit of an element. It is not that nothing can be smaller than that, but it, they are the smallest that can contain all the properties of the element. All right? Does that answer your question? All right. So, so I'm gonna start off with this, all right? Are, yeah, they're smaller. Okay, so some people will talk about, well, electrons, they are, but one electron or one proton will not have the properties of, for example, an atom of, uh, let's take it, let's, let's be fun, uh, sodium, for example. Now, let's take iron. Now, we know iron as a metal will have certain properties. In everyday life, we know iron is an element. We know that it has properties. It can... When I say an atom of iron, what I have is with me the smallest possible particle that would still have the properties of iron. Even though iron has... 26 protons. So there are definitely things smaller than one iron because one proton is smaller than 26 protons. But we say that when we, so when we say an atom is the smallest particle, it's not the smallest absolute particle. It is the smallest possible ever. Like that can contain the properties of the element. That's the thing. So when I combine 26 protons, they give me iron. And that has properties like rusting. That has properties that are specific to iron. And it has properties specific to iron, like even it can conduct electricity. But if I take a single proton, which is smaller for sure than an iron atom, it doesn't conduct current. It doesn't rust. So that's the thing. You need to understand that it, uh, when we say, uh, when we say that, uh, what was I saying? Yeah. So when we say, so an atom is the smallest particle that can represent an element. It can go smaller than that. So that does answer your question, Dilawar. Yeah. Yes, okay, great. So now, how small is small? You see? Small. It's really small. Like, for example,
नमक पॉइंट जीरो 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 सिक्स ग्राम्स दैट्स हाउ स्मॉल इट इज एक्सक्यूज मी वा सॉरी Um, yeah, I'm gonna be sneezing again. So let me mute myself. Yeah, so that's how small a grain of salt is. Really small. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, there are. Certain questions people keep asking, and I'm going to answer them at the end of class. I'm going to take notes, okay? So that because I can't disturb the class right now, so some people ask something. So okay, and then this was about uh, one thing was notes, site, etc. Okay, I'll do that. So, okay. molecules of gas that you pass as fart are even smaller i'm saying the things that you can visibly see with your eye ha huh, you might say well i can see flying dust in it that's absolutely you can so i'm not saying there's nothing smaller i'm just saying that this is one of the smallest things but an atom so basically what we're trying to say is mass represents size also in a lot of definitions for relative that i that element spoken about like it's the r standard for things right okay now you know how small mass of an atom of carbon is 0.00000 that's like 3 6 9 okay one second 3 6 9 12 15 18 21 22 23 yeah this is live and it will be saved as a recording for those of you wondering okay now this is how small do you see how small this is you we tend to write this in standard form as 2 times 10 to the power of 23 grams while a grain of salt is 6 times 1 2 3 4 5 that's how small an atom is i mean you can you can fit so many atoms in just a grain of salt that's how small it is you know just that's how small it is now what does that mean that becomes a problem you see because what we've always wanted to do so we say okay so now why do we care about this stuff why do we care about the size because when you're doing chemical reactions yesterday with abul and earlier with me uh, any chemical reaction that we want to carry out in the lab we want to be able to measure the amount we want to be able to know how much we're going to make so in in everyday life we use things like mass to represent the amount of something or even the size like for example if you go buy mangoes from a it's not mango season but if you were to go buy mangoes okay now mangoes are bought by weight by mass so the heavier a mango is so obviously so you'll get less mangoes in 1 kilo but when you go to the fruit wala when you go to the fruit guy he'll give you mangoes by the kilo so obviously kilo becomes a measure of how much mango you want you just can't go and say give me mass how much wheat 
sugar you want you don't mass even salt that you buy it comes in packets of half kilo or quarter kilo or one kilo okay okay is the this uh, the audio goes off in between that is strange fine with everybody else also okay all right there's always some streaming issues no matter how much you get anyway so yeah okay so audio is perfect all right it's zoom seems to be fine it's always the restream and the youtube and all that that become a problem yeah mass and so for mangoes and many other thing mass is a unit by which you measure something but when you go by bananas literally bananas are not sold by weight okay bananas are sold by the dozen yeah that's a banana they're sold by the dozen they're not sold one two you will go by six bananas or 12 bananas hashmi i just started most boss you're just starting the idea okay theek hai so the reason i'm trying to get you to understand this is that look the problem is in the real world is we have to be able to measure something either we count it like how many ginti ke 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 how many or we count it by mass 1 kilo 2 kilo 3 kilo 4 kilo 5 kilo 6 kilo uh. yeah so dozen and mass so that's the kind of thing in chemistry we can't really measure individual atoms by mass because if you look at of carbon it's not done in the lab you can't go to the lab and say give me 10 atoms of oxygen or give me five atoms of helium i want five atoms we wish we could have that but we can't have that we can't count them we don't see them we don't count them we can't have them so what do we do we have a problem and the problem is that it's too small okay so uh first we heard the idea before i do this before this we heard the idea of uh relative masses do you remember relative masses now so i'm going to talk about that first and then go on to back to moles because i need to talk about relative masses before we do that because that's something that you guys need to remember so just one second come on yeah so what about what do i say uh one second mm -hmm. so when i say okay this is so when i was saying abhi ha huh, the mass of a carbon it came out to very very small it's about this much in grams but so what we did was first we came up with a relative scale and i'm sure you've already seen that you've heard this term before relative atomic 
mass because there are so first of all we have the idea that we can also compare the masses of atoms we already know that so let me clear that air of confusion first before do that if there is any confusion so when we say so we knew the smallest atom was helium and I'll take these guys separately on the side helium the mass of helium was uh, what we discovered was four times the mass of hydrogen lithium through calculations we had figured is five times the mass of hydrogen nitrogen was at carbon for example no, no, I'm not saying mass. No, nitrogen was not 7, nitrogen was 14. My bad. Okay, nitrogen was 14 times the mass of hydrogen. Carbon was 12 times the mass of hydrogen. Oxygen was 16 times the mass of hydrogen. And neon was 23 times the mass of hydrogen. Okay. Now, these are all because. Hydrogen was the smallest and everything else was a multiple of hydrogen. Literally, that what it, that's what it was. So you had things like, so, so what we said was, we gave hydrogen the smallest mass. We called it, we, in, in some books you'll even see the word A. It stands for atomic mass unit. It became, we invented a unit to give hydrogen something. We called it 1 AMU. In many books, it's just written as hydrogen mass of one or relative mass of one. Helium was four times the mass of hydrogen, so we called it a relative mass of four or four AMU. Lithium was five. Lithium is actually seven, not five, my bad. It's seven. So lithium was seven times heavier than hydrogen, so we gave it the relative mass of seven. Carbon was 12 times heavier than hydrogen, so we gave a relative mass of a uh, 7. So far, that's how, so now, you don't need to know how we got the actual masses. We did. We discovered them. We found them. I'm just saying that this is what we know to be true. It's like sodium, not a neon. Sodium was 23. My bad. So when I look at, for example, uh, calcium, it's 40 times the mass of hydrogen, so we give it a Relative atomic mass of 40. Okay? Yeah. So, that's what we have so far. Any questions about this? Before I can talk to, move on? This is the, I wanted to create this. So, what this would look like is that, basically, uh, the mass, and I want to show this to you. If you guys were to just give me... Uh, I had a nice little diagram somewhere. I did, I did. I swear to God, I did. Hmm. Mm can't find it but I had a nice little scale I thought that would be very handy okay um, mm. uh. mm -hmm. 
Okay. I guess not. Mm. Uh. Just, you gotta bear with me for a minute, okay? Sorry. I wanted to show this to you somewhere. My bad. Can't seem to find it. Hmm. <sighs> okay. I'm sorry. This diagram I was looking for. But anyway, so let me get back to this. Okay. Um, so, now. So, so that was the idea. So that's the idea of relative masses. Now, that's the first one came from. Now the next thing we'll talk about is, so by this tells me, we've been saying this, that the relative mass of hydrogen is one, carbon is 12. We've been saying that. that it doesn't mean that the mass of an atom of carbon is 12. It means that the relative mass, the relative mass of a carbon atom is 12 or you could also to 12 amu. That's, uh, you can say this, or the ma mass of carbon atom is 12 amu. But you can't say 12 grams. So when you said the mass of a carbon atom is 12 grams, that is wrong. Because the mass of a carbon atom, depending on which unit you quote, if you're gonna quote grams, I told you is 2 times 10 to the minus 23 grams. And for those of you who are wondering how small this was, this was 0 0.000, 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, yeah, this many grams. So, so the mass, or by the way, all of these three that I've written is about one carbon atom, this fellow. It's about an atom of Because relative mass is 12, in atomic mass units is 12, and its mass in grams is 0 0.000000 grams. All right? Yeah. Now, where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? So we go from here is that, okay, so my problem is, is that in the lab, this unit and this unit are meaningless. This just tells me it's 12 times heavier than hydrogen, but it's meaningless. So there's a couple of questions. So this is the story behind mass number, Saad? Absolutely. The story is that they were all relative to hydrogen. So Sanghani, we have changed the reference to carbon only because carbon is more relative in the Earth's atmosphere. That's it, on the Earth's surface. All right. Then, that's that. You guess that? You follow? That's where the story comes from. It's really relative to hydrogen. Now, we have relative mass, but I can't do much. Go buy grapes in the market or Nobody's gonna count and give you 30, 40 grapes. They'll give you one kilo of grapes or two kilos of grapes. You go buy peanuts. Nobody counts peanuts. The guy puts them on his pan balance. He puts a measuring scale like a one gra kilogram and gives you peanuts worth of that many. 
unless you buy big things nobody sells you by the count they sell you by the mass measure and then know how many atoms are there because you see a mass doesn't help me um mass doesn't help me what do you call it know about atoms till i know the uh, mass only helps me if it also tells me how many atoms something has because if you look at the equations and if you remember one of the equations we did this in mass terms this is like saying 12 grams of carbon really reacts with 32 grams of oxygen to make 44 grams of carbon dioxide and if somebody did not give you the equation but just the masses it will look so stupid that 12 grams of carbon reacts with 32 grams of oxygen to make 44 grams of carbon dioxide what makes this easy to understand is seeing the actual number of atoms that co2 has two oxygen atoms and one carbon atoms we want to know number of atoms but we can't count number of atoms they are too small so what we use is we use mass to calculate the number of atoms literally calculate the number of atoms yeah yeah today's stream is having unlike last i don't know why this starts happening at this hour it was fine earlier but this but let's just stick with it some people's stream is lagging by the way sorry guys again this is a very uh, you could say unique setup that i am doing this month so you know starting on this month so it takes a little time getting used to i hope that people who have been patient with me are still staying patient with me yes okay yes the lover everybody on zoom are you guys all cool are you all okay yeah the all right thank you the lover i love your love okay manaf says i just want the lessons don't we all i just want lessons in life you know thank you thank you all right so yeah this is on zoom and youtube by the way that's what i'm streaming <laughs> i'm glad sad thank you for that thank you for that uh no it's not just for random bros and my school kids all of people across pakistan and beyond sponsored by noon academy it's on their platform also on youtube also on zoom also there are some people on youtube trying to figure out why am i doing this live i'm doing this live so that i get to teach everybody right now 5 to 6 pm pakistan time and the people outside of pakistan who are also especially those of pakistan region i'm really happy to help out so yeah all right okay so the lectures will be made available on the mighty networks also and the live streams uh, mighty networks hasan all right Mm. Okay. Yeah, because it's a Zoom webinar. Now this is the one. This is one. This is the same code that goes to everybody. Uh, all right. I think yeah, Zay was asking. No. And the and uh, some the Zoom nobody hears other Zoomies because it's a Zoom webinar, not a meeting. So there's no mics. All right. All right. Anyways. So no I can't see you. <laughs> no I can't see you. <clears throat> it's okay. I know it's a little lonely but it makes it e easier for me to teach and focus on teaching if I can't see you. That's why when you guys chat, I know you're alive and you're alive and kicking. So just listen, understand the reason for me doing this. I'm doing this to explain to you why we have moles. Prepared that the fact that moles were there to make our lives easy 
we start getting over this fear of moles because I always have this with kids. Everybody has this innate fear of moles. It's the hardest chapter in chemistry. Oh, it's so difficult. It's, it is there to make our lives easy. And the reason why they're there to make our lives easy, because if I were to tell you two things I told you, one is that an actual atom of carbon is so small. It's so, so small. Okay, so we can't really count it. We'll have to use mass to calculate the number of atoms. Because if you were to count it, you could not count it. There's so many. Because even if I say, I'll take one gram of carbon. If I were to tell you this, how many atoms does one gram have? I'll tell you one second. Um, one gram of carbon has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. this many atoms of carbon. Now, you obviously don't need to know this. I'm telling you because this will make you understand, okay, look, that's why we have this unit in moles in chemistry. And it's only used for moles chemistry, even though it can be used for anything else, it never has occurred to be used for anything else. It doesn't need to be used for anything else, but it's used for moles. Now, oh, in chemistry. So the problem was that one gram of carbon is very, very, sorry, one atom of carbon is very, 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 very small, extremely small. Has no hardly any mass that you can, it'll be worth even measuring, okay? Secondly, even if I take one gram, which is one of the most smallest uh, units, is that one gram has uh, a lot of atoms. So what do we do? Now, so what we did was, we said, okay, yaar, ek second. we have a problem. We have a problem that I, I know one gram is so many atoms. And if I know that, I can use this information. But counting it is too difficult. And I know that one atom of carbon is uh, 2 times 10 to the power of minus 23 grams. That is, like I said, na, 0 0.000. And I'm, you know, a lot of zeros and that. It's really small. So somebody said, okay, how many atoms will it take for carbon? Because we knew one thing. We knew that one atom of carbon has a relative mass of what? Has a 12 as, as its relative mass. So what we said was, okay, so if one atom is this much, this many grams, how many atoms would it take to have a mass of 12 grams? Not 12 relative mass, because 12 relative mass would have just been one atom. But we wanted 12 grams. And the relative unit and grams is very, very different because understand this, simply speaking, the same atom who, whose relative mass is 12, his actual mass is 0 0.2 and 2. Very small. So, how many atoms would it take to give you 12 grams? I mean, we did this math. So we said, okay, you know what? Let's do this. How many atoms does it take where each atom's mass is 10 to the power of minus 23 to give me a mass of 12 grams? Okay, so the lower, yeah, so basically this, not 12, not 12 divided by the relative unit, 12 divided by actual mass. It's 12 divided by the mass of each atom in grams, in grams. So it's 12 divided by 2 times 23. And this gives you 6 times 10 to the power of 23. And some of you might be able to recognize this number. It's approximately a number that you have seen before. Yeah. Saad, where is it blurry? Is it blurry on uh, YouTube or Zoom? Yeah. 
ओके सर बेसिकलिंग यू दस कि देखो एक एटम वन एटम ऑफ कार्बन इज टू टाइम्स टेन पार माइनस ट्वेंटी थ्री ग्राम्स विच विल मीन दैट टू एटम्स ऑफ कार्बन शुड बी टू टाइम्स टू टाइम्स टेन पार ऑफ माइनस ट्वेंटी थ्री एंड देर फॉर हाउ मेनी एटम्स ऑफ कार्बन विल बी ट्वेल्व ग्राम्स वाई ट्वेल्व बिकॉज वी न्यू इज रिलेटिव मास वॉज ट्वेल्व बट हाउ मेनी एटम्स विल इट मेक टू गिव मी ट्वेल्व ग्राम्स रिलेटिव मास ऑफ ट्वेल्व एंड ट्वेल्व ग्राम्स आर टू डिफरेंट थिंग्स रिलेटिव मास ऑफ ट्वेल्व इज जस्ट वन एटम बट ट्वेल्व ग्राम्स इज हाउ मेनी एटम्स सिक्स टाइम्स टेन पावर ट्वेंटी थ्री यू बिन you must have heard this name avogadro's constant if you've taken any class of chemistry in school you must have heard of this idea the avogadro's number or avogadro's constant you seen that hmm Yeah, makes sense. Okay, so no, not yet at least. Uh, I don't. I have heard. So you're not seen it. Okay, it's all right. It doesn't matter. The point being that this is what I use. So in in the lab. It's a meaningful measure. It has a meaning. So. For example, uh, let's do this. Let's. If I tell you that I know the one atom of hydrogen is one, you can say atomic mass unit or relative mass. We, I am also telling you that one atom of hydrogen is really one point six six seven times ten minus twenty four grams. and for those of you who've taken chemistry math in standard form you can recognize this is going to be a very small number but if i take this many atoms they give me a mass of 1 gram just like this many atoms of carbon give me a mass of 12 grams so this many atoms of sodium will be 23 grams because remember the relative masses are what how much heavier they are than hydrogen so if this many atoms of hydrogen has a mass of 1 gram the same number of carbon atoms will be 12 times heavier that's where the relativeness comes in and this same number of atoms of sodium will be 23 times heavier okay so yeah this is where it comes from now where it comes from and solving questions are two different things okay so and there's a couple of questions here let me answer them okay munaf what do you want to explain again this part okay dekho i was telling you that look okay one atom of hydrogen is one atomic mass unit the smallest possible guy the same atom of hydrogen if i was to give you its actual mass in grams it will be this many grams grams remember wahi cheez same thing having different masses because ek ka unit hai amu aur dusre ka unit hai grams that's the case i hope that makes sense to you this part all i'm saying is 
now the reason why we the avogadro's number is so beautiful is is that if i take one atom of hydrogen its mass is really 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 small okay but if i take then its mass literally if you do this multiplier if you were to do this multiplier you would actually get 1 gram because that's what we wanted and we wanted a number that will give me the same mass of hydrogen in gram that's what a mole is a mole is the number of particles of an atom that have the same mass as the relative atomic mass which is 1 but in grams and we call that number we call it a label its label is 1 mole that's it just like 12's label is what dozen remember that that mole is just a chemist's dozen it's how we use the word dozen okay anyways where was i hmm. so the point being this that because car let's say carbon is 12 times heavier than hydrogen so 12 times 1 gram is 12 grams if i say that calcium is 40 times heavier than hydrogen then this many atoms of calcium are 40 grams so then yeah you guys you guys get this now how do we use it that's different and that's actually less difficult than what i'm showing you guys right now but so far this is where the mole comes from any questions you have so far for this hmm no sir all right okay then mhm mm so dekho the reason why we do this the reason why we going to use moles if you remember if i tell you that okay i have a reaction that magnesium two magnesiums or no let's take a simple one you've done this before so carbon plus oxygen makes carbon dioxide we can have said this that one atom of carbon reacts with one molecule of oxygen to form one molecule of co2 we can definitely say that that's something we can say i hope you guys can see the screen yeah sorry if it was not there this is the reaction now i have this reaction now this is well and good there's nothing wrong with that it's absolutely perfect one atom of carbon one molecule okay so how do you figure it's an atom or a molecule well if it's unbonded it's an atom c this is o2 there are two of them they must be bonded they must be covalently bonded the lover the last chapter we did and these are all covalently bonded because the formula is co2 so they are combined and if they combined they are a molecule if they are uncombined they are an atom all right
So far, okay. Now, what I'm saying is this, that we could have said this, we could have definitely said this, but I, this is not useful to me in the lab. What is useful is in grams. So the reason was care, instead of saying one atom with one molecule gives me one molecule, therefore this many atoms of C, of C not O2, sorry, of C, react with this O2 to give me this many molecules of CO2. If one reacts with one to give one, six will react with six to give six. That's just simple ratio. That's what reactions are in chemistry, right? Now, having said that, I'm saying the label for this number of atoms is one mole. So I can say one mole of atoms of carbon react with one mole of molecules of O2 to produce one mole of molecules CO2. And why would I want to do that? I want to do that because I know one mole of carbon atoms will have a mass of 12 grams, which I can go in the lab to find out. One mole of molecules of O2 will have a mass of 32 grams and one mole of molecules of CO2 will have a mass of 44 grams first of all. So it is doubled now because each oxygen is 16 Z so doubling that makes it 32. And if I have this many molecules of O2 it's basically I have double of this many atoms of O. So O K atoms are ये पूरा मिलके एक so that's the why the I use the word what molecule not atom molecule of O2 yes atoms will be twice as many okay yeah the lover is being recorded on YouTube and I am so sorry I should also be recording Zoom no oh oops crap Oh, chalo. Oh, well. YouTube and I will put it on Mighty Networks, but yeah, now it's no point. The class is almost over. I should have recorded it from the start. Just as a precaution, I should always. No, no, I, the Zoom was not recording, which I normally also do, by the way. So now, okay, so and a lot of what I've done today will seem like, why is he bothering with all of this stuff? I'm bothering all of this stuff is because I want to make sure you understand why we got this. It's all it is is saying is that one mole is just a lot of atoms and their mass is the, because I know that the relative mass of carbon was 12, oxygen is 16, which means O2 is 32, but I can't say 32 grams. I can only say that one mole of O2 is 32 grams. If one carbon is 12, the relative mass, I can't say it's 12 grams. I can only say one mole of atoms of carbon is 12 grams. That's why we need moles. Okay? And so one mole of carbon dioxide is 44 grams. And so why does this come in handy to us? Because I can use this to predict. The whole point of this is tomorrow, I want to burn, let's say, I tell you that, why do, I, why, do I, why do scientists bother with this? Why do we care about moles so much? We care about moles so much, is tomorrow, I want to know how much carbon dioxide am I making, if I say, and this is what I'll say, I'll say, yeah, okay, I'm going to burn uh, 24 thousands of carbon, or burnt in oxygen how much co2 is made now 
unless I learn every single reactions ratio individually, or I imply moles here. Now, how will I imply moles? Well, very simply, okay, let's forget, forget even 24,000. Can I say 24 grams? Now, you might wonder, well, what's the, how will I do this? Well, the re reaction equation is CNO2 becoming CO2. So I want to use this to find this. So what did I just do that helps you do that? Well, I have told you this, that one mole of carbon atoms, which is this many atoms, is has a mass of 12 grams. That's the mass I've told you. They have a mass of 12 grams. So 24 grams is there for how many moles? Why? Because why am I why am I wanting to find moles? Because I know that one mole of carbon is reacting with one mole of oxygen to make one mole of CO2. All right. Now, now, understand that. This is what we have. Now, how I use this to solve this? Now, somebody's asked this, I already answered this earlier. So I'll just agreed, Noman. So if one mole is 12 grams, 24 grams is how many moles? So therefore, this must be two moles of carbon. So if one mole of carbon makes one mole of CO2, so if one mole of carbon makes one mole of CO2, two moles of carbon will make how much CO2? Can I ask you guys this? Hmm? 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 Two moles. So now, that's the beauty of it. So I know it makes two moles of CO2. But somebody might say, well, wait a minute. How do I find its mass? I want to know the mass. Well, the beauty is you will find the relative mass of CO2, which is 44, also known as MR, which means one mole of CO2's mass is 44 grams. So if one mole is 44 grams, and you have to find two moles. What's the problem? What's the mole of that? Hmm? So if one mole is 44, two moles would be 88. So this is what scientists use moles for. Is that using moles, it has becomes very easy to predict how much of a product will a certain reactant make? That's it. So it will tell you that 24 grams will make 48 grams of CO2. That's why we have moles. And this is the introduction, the philosophical introduction to moles. Uh, I'll have Abul do some balancing equations and answer your questions tomorrow. We'll do actual mole calculation for the stuff that you need for your exams on Tuesday. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we'll do a lot of those moles, all right? And we'll try to wrap it up majorly. So anybody who having confusions with moles, we will be happy. Questions, some MCQs, some your questions also. All right? So I'm going to end this class and this. We'll do empirical formula after we've done this. Z, all right. So one here is Zoom. Zoom is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Noon Academy's platform. So what topic will we do on Saturday? Saad, I intend to do questions on bonding and uh, some periodic table stuff, MCQs. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm going to end this particular thing right now.
have myself here for you guys and this moles on Tuesday all right just a little bit more, more patience till we streamline all the streams like some are saying the streams were buggy and uh, whatever else they were on YouTube all right and I think the stream is stuck on YouTube which is so sad okay but uh, yeah I'll get some analysis there all right all right okay yeah there was yeah the frame rate bit rate dropped for a bit in between somewhere around s yeah all right all right and streams on twitch all right yeah i know we'll figure this one out <laughs> 